I think most people will agree with me that SC400s are not the most beautiful car in the world. It's a simple and straight design, and compared to cars today, it honestly looks kind of boring. Having grown up with Need for Speed Underground 2 and Fast and Furious, the actual Fast and Furious, not whatever the hell's going on now. So I decided to take my SC400 and design something for it that would make it look like a modern day Lexus SC400. So with the help of 3D scanning and the use of 3D printing, I'm going to completely redesign this car the way I want it. So sit back and enjoy the process of me creating a brand new wide body for my SC400. All right, the first panel is glued on. Glue that I'm using, which is JB Weld body panel adhesive and gap filler. I was gonna buy 3M panel bond, but it was $90 at Advance Auto or at O'Reilly. You also need the tool for it, which is another $120. But I found it on Amazon for 130, I think. So I'm gonna order that for the rear. This little tube is not gonna be enough for the rear because it's gonna have to go all the way around. But for this, I think it'll be fine. The glue is actually oozing out over the edge. Should be pretty well adhered. I guess we'll find out in an hour, which is when this fully should be cured. We'll take the, set, the self tappers out and we'll see if it's holding. I had to add more screws here. And as you can see, not really, uh, it's, it's overhanging here and the glue oozed out and onto the side skirt. So I wanna do the other side I'm gonna take the side skirt off completely so I don't have that issue, but I had to add these screws because this gap was pretty big, but that's okay. All this is getting chopped off anyways because the wheel hits it. All right, sorry I didn't film it, but as you can see, both sides are on, fully glued on. And look how well this glue works. The whole metal fender is flexing when I move the, kind of crazy, look at this. It's not going anywhere. But yeah, both sides are on. Everything's nice and rigid, everything's holding. So now what I have to do is blend the edge. So you see now we have this little lip here. I don't know if you can see that. And obviously that's higher than stock. And if I were to put the hood down, it's way lower than this edge. So now what I have to do is feather that edge in. We're gonna blend it in a little bit, just do a little bit of rough sanding with maybe 80 grit on the orbital or possibly on the angle grinder, wherever that is, right there. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it on the time lapse and we're gonna do some grinding. I'm gonna start with this whole top edge because it's nice and easy to see. And then I gotta come over to the door. It's gonna be a little harder because the door's in the way and I don't wanna take the door off. So as you saw yesterday, I got the edges smoothed down as much as I could without it getting too thin and starting to chip off. As you can see right here, it got so thin that it started just breaking up a little bit. I don't know how well you can tell, but it's pretty smooth. So the thing that worked the easiest was a giant old file, pretty fine. This one worked well, and then I have a another one somewhere. Where did I put it? And also I use this one. It's This one's a little more fine but they both work, doesn't really matter. And I don't know if you can tell, but plastic's kind of nice to work with because instead of creating dust, it just creates these little particles and they don't really get anything like 
dusty. They just blow right off. They don't stick to anything. After the file, I used Orbital Sander with uh, 80 grit and smoothed it out even more. So this, like this side, for example, is like completely smooth. And then I went over the whole thing as well with uh, 80 grit to get it ready for what we're doing today. And that's gonna be fiberglass. That's the model, plain weave. Nine ounce. I'm also gonna drill little holes everywhere where the plastic meets the metal so that the epoxy and the fiberglass actually make a bond to the metal and they're not just sitting on top of the plastic. I think that's gonna make things a lot easier. I can just fiberglass right over this and try to wrap it around this edge. That's gonna be way easier than trying to avoid getting epoxy and fiberglass on the door. Well, the camera died, but as you can see, I got everything perfectly covered. I cut off the excess because it was weighing down the fabric and it was creating these folds. And as you can see, I took the scissors, shears from my fiberglass that I use, and I cut little slots where the folds were happening. And that just helps with uh, the fiberglass laying flat. And you can see now it's going exothermic. Look at it steaming. I don't know if you could see that, but it is uh, melting the cup. I'm gonna go put this outside. I had my Google Home have a timer. So once I started mixing, I set a 15 minute timer, which is about the pot life for the epoxy. And I had a little bit more than that. I think it came out to about 20 minutes. Yeah, having a audible timer going so you know how much time you have. And I kept asking Google how much time I have left. It made it so much easier. Now you can see why I put all this plastic down because there's epoxy on everything everywhere. I should have put some on the floor, but whatever. But yeah, it's looking really good. I was concerned about this edge coming off, but as you can see, everything is perfect. The layers are overlapping here nicely. So this top piece comes down to like here and then the bottom piece comes up and overlaps with it. I got it all the way down here. Everything's looking good. They'll get trimmed down. I could even touch it up a little bit. I try to get this to overlap, but I, I knew it wasn't gonna stay. Fiberglass doesn't really like to stick around 90 degree corners like that. That's why I was surprised that it actually stuck to this. But I think the reason is because I have such a large piece that I was able to stick to. But yeah, first side is all fiberglass. So now we have three hours for this to fully cure. Three to six hours, it says. I'm gonna grab another cup, start mixing up the next batch for the other side. So if you've noticed, I am using fiberglass cloth, not the tiger hair stuff. That's like, you know, I have some of that stuff, but that stuff you can only use with fiberglass resin or isothalic or polyester or whatever. For some reason, it does not wet out with epoxy. I don't know why, but it just like doesn't stick at all. So I like to use fiberglass cloth. It's a little more rigid and it's a lot less messy. You don't have those fibers sticking everywhere to everything. Like with the uh, tiger hair stuff, it gets stuck all to your brush. So I like to use the fiberglass cloth, the woven stuff, and it works like carbon fiber basically. All right, it's been a few hours and the epoxy is fully set. You can see it's nice and rigid now. It still needs a little bit of reinforcement right here and right here, it needs a little bit more. But this time I'm gonna do it from the back. I got plenty of room here. I can just hand sand it from the back right here. And then I'm just gonna put a couple pieces down from the back side on both sides. And then here, I don't think I'm gonna do anything. So this needs to get chopped with the level of the bumper. And then I'm gonna create another piece that's gonna go back to the fender right here. So this is gonna be like fully enclosed like this. All right, that's enough rambling. I'm gonna mix up a, a little more epoxy, start laying some more fiberglass. Luckily, I already have those small pieces. I can just use those. I'm just gonna cut them into a smaller piece. And I think I'm just gonna go as far as I can reach, which is, you can see my hand there all the way to the edge. Also, I forgot to mention this. You can see all my edges are already trimmed. So before the epoxy is like fully, fully cured, it won't be like sticky or anything, but it'll leave like a residue on your hands. You can just take a blade and you can just trim off the excess super easily because it's still like a little bit flexible. Obviously, I only had two thin layers of uh, fiberglass, so it was really easy to trim it off. 
carbon fiber is a lot harder to trim if you're gonna do this in carbon fiber, but it is doable if you have a really sharp blade. Clean edge everywhere. Now all I have to do is just sand it. It'll be ready for body filler. All right, it is the next day and the fenders are nice and rigid now. See, everything is super stiff. Adding those layers on the inside really uh, stiffen things up. You can see there's no more flex in the fender itself or the, the like this piece. The flex is now just the whole fender moving. So I'm gonna take the fenders off now, and I'm gonna take them outside, set them on some saw horses, and just start sanding. Now I just really have to sand a bunch and try to get it as smooth as possible. I'm gonna try to get all these waves out of here, because if you, you can't really tell on camera, but every uh, screw hole, there's a little bit of a wave. I'll shoot a little bit of time lapse of that, but it's mostly just gonna be sanding, so there's not really much to see. I'm sorry if it's windy, but here it is. It's looking pretty damn smooth. Now the little imperfections show up. All the little holes where not enough Bondo was placed, or maybe it got sanded out completely. So those are just the fiberglass weave. So those will get filled in with spot putty. Same with like little spots right here, little spot right there. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. It's looking smooth though, like in terms of the actual shape of it. Looks really good, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna let this primer dry, then I'm gonna give it a light scuff with some like 320 sandpaper to get all these little nibs and stuff off. And then we'll fill in all the little tiny spots with spot filler. And then we'll do another coat of primer and then another sanding and we'll see how it is. If it's good, it's gonna be ready for paint. And on the other side, I was sanding and I blasted through the fiberglass right here. A little hole here, a little hole here. So I got those filled in, waiting for that to dry fully. And uh, that will get sanded back down. Well, it's been another, I don't know, a couple hours. It's almost dark. It's about to get dark, but it is almost perfect. So everything has been sanded twice now with 320. And that's, this is all the little spots that are left. There's little tiny little pinholes that I just want to fill in. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just waiting for these to dry. And then I'm just going to do one more pass of sanding with 320 over this stuff. And then one more primer, one more sanding, and then it's ready for paint. All right, it's the next day. I got everything prepped with a Scotch-Brite. I cleaned it off with degreaser. It's now ready for paint. This is actually the second time I'm using one of these. This, you know, this has the little nozzle that you can change. So I like the vertical fan, but last time I used one of these, it like clogged instantly. And I literally had to throw away the whole can. So let's hope that these eight cans that I just bought will actually last. I got floaters in my eyeball, coasters by the shot glass, smoking let my mind fall, plenty roaches, no ass, stepping on the critters, jitters going through my spine, should be used to a state of a poor man's mind, it's just PB no J, huh? Kool-Aid no sugar, oil in the bath, water for warm showers in winter, work cooking, she clean, mama was a magician, she switched it and turned the tub to a washing machine, air drying and clothes, hanging up with my woes, enemies was my friend and me laughing about all my lows. But it's on. Greet me with a hay and a wave with a real act. These fishermen lines are catching, trying to bring the real back. Guess it's time to bring. 
bring the real back. Feel that vibe in the air, fingers are snapping. I am a sinner, said the saint to the pastor. Baptized by the west side, it's the age of the trapper. You're old enough to enter, age ain't a factor. So the youngest be strapped, pointing pistols in classes. I smell fear and a smile, hit the pain and the laughter. Yeah. Focus is hocus pocus when brokers are jokes. So dope is the locust that's eating when pockets low. Six cents don't make sense where I'm from. I use my six cents, that's the hustle real hard. Consciousness don't pay rent, and I won't sleep on pavement. In my night with amen, on my knees praying long. Thinking about my next blessing, be the ring of the phone. Saying, wake up, brother, it ain't a dream. What you want? I live my song, I'm not opposed to praying, but it been so long If you in the sky, not just in my thought With no one else around to catch me if I fall Will you take my call, or will you just let it ring Point out a list of my mistakes, and that could be anything Most of the time I'm reminiscing, cause my current is stitches Tend to think the die too late to pay this patient a visit Live my spirit with some spirits, but the lyrics say different And the mirrors say nothing, still appear that they listen Roll call, are you here, or in a state of indifference Fell for none, that's fell for all, or free for all in that system And they'll cut you to pieces, make you the steak for their dinner These days you commit treason, trying to say how you feeling but I'm gonna be the one to make it, inshallah, God willing Until time I'm chilling, trying to feed my village And erase all ceilings I live my song, I'm not opposed to praying But it been so long, if you in the sky And I just in my thought, with no one else around To catch me if I fall, will you take my call? Alright, and there we have it. The white body's complete. I hope you guys like those uh, shots at night. That was from Tuner Evo, which literally happened yesterday. The car actually won a trophy at Tuner Evo, so make sure you subscribe. I mean, if you follow me on other social medias, you already know. Full video of that coming pretty soon, so make sure you subscribe, you don't miss that. So the front of the wide body is done, and now it's time to do the rear of the wide body. That's going to be in a couple videos, because I do have some other changes still happening to the car. Coilovers, I have a video on the full rear suspension. Got some engine goodies. There's a lot of stuff coming before the season ends and I'm hoping to also go do some more drifting because I haven't done much of that this summer. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Yeah, any any concerns you have with uh, the way the bumpers fit, whatever, don't worry. I know everything will be changed. The whole front end is gonna change, the whole rear end is gonna change. This car will not look like an SC by the end of this year or by the end of, or by next summer, let's say. Got some sick footage from Tuner Evo, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I don't know what else to say. Uh, the car is just, I am so happy with how the car is turning out, and uh, it's just, it's so cool. It's so freaking cool. Like, the car looks badass. Like, it looks like no other SC on the planet. God, the shape of it. It's just so sexy. Like, look at this, dude. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Yeah, thank you, ding-dongs. Stay sweet and peace out. I'll see you guys next week. America, America, America. Do you have your passport?